Bonjour, Louis Blouin de la tribune de la presse parlementaire. Bienvenue à cette euh, conférence, euh, ce briefing technique euh, des euh, gens de la santé publique. Euh, vous allez euh, entendre ce matin euh, Dr Supriya Sharma, conseillère médicale en chef à Santé Canada, Dr Marc Bertion, directeur du Bureau des sciences médicales de Santé Canada, et Dr Howard New, sous-administrateur en chef de la santé publique du Canada. Euh, donc, on va commencer avec quelques allocutions et après, euh, il y aura une ronde de questions. Euh, euh, déjà, je vous inviterai euh, à lever votre main, s'il vous plaît, si vous avez des questions euh, à poser. Là, les gens qui euh, suivent tout ça par Zoom. So, uh, anybody uh, who has a question, I invite you to raise your virtual hand, please. Uh, we will start now with the allocutions. Uh, Dr. Um, Sharma. Good morning. Bonjour. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today, I'm here to talk to you about Health Canada's authorization of the first bivalent COVID-19 vaccine in Canada. Health Canada has authorized an updated version of the Moderna Spikevax COVID-19 vaccine for adults 18 years of age and older. And this vaccine is known as a bivalent vaccine because it targets two coronavirus strains, the original SARS-CoV-2 virus from 2019 and the Omicron BA1 variant. After completing a thorough and independent scientific review of the evidence, Health Canada has determined that this bivalent Moderna spike vax booster has met the requirements for the safety and the effectiveness uh, by, from the regulations. This marks a milestone in Canada's response to this pandemic. So today what I'd like to talk about is what a bivalent vaccine is and does and why it's important in the next phase of the pandemic. Up to now, all authorized COVID-19 vaccines in Canada have targeted one strain of the virus, the original SARS-CoV-2 virus from 2019. These vaccines have served us well over time and continue to be very effective at preventing what matters most, severe illness, hospitalization, and death. With billions of vaccines administered around the world, we now have more knowledge about how vaccines respond to new variants. And with the Omicron variant now circulating, we know that the existing vaccines can be less effective or wane over time. One of the advantages of the mRNA vaccines is that they can be adapted relatively quickly to new variants, and scientists and vaccine manufacturers are updating COVID-19 vaccines by adding other ingredients which specifically target the circulating virus strains. For example, each dose of the new bivalent Moderna spike vax vaccine cont contains 50 micrograms of mRNA with 25 micrograms targeting the original SARS-CoV-2 virus strain and 25 micrograms specifically targeting the Omicron BA1 subvariant. It's essentially two vaccines in one. Health Canada's decision to authorize this new bivalent vaccine was based on data from a clinical trial that showed that a booster dose of the bivalent Moderna vaccine triggers a strong immune response against both the Omicron BA1 and the original SARS-CoV-2 virus strains. While the vaccine was designed to more specifically target the Omicron BA1 subvariant, we know that this vaccine also generates a good immune response against the Omicron subvariants BA4 and BA5 that have more recently emerged. This booster is also intended to extend the durability of protection. This will help us face the next waves. From a safety point of view, this new vaccine is similar to the previous approved Moderna spike vax booster with the same mild adverse events that resolved quickly. Health Canada is currently reviewing a submission from Pfizer-BioNTech for a bivalent vaccine that also targets the original SARS-CoV-2 strain, as well as the Omicron BA1 subvariant. To ensure we have as many options as possible for dealing with current and future variants, we have reached out to both Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna to request that they file submissions for vaccines specifically targeting the BA4 and BA5 subvariants. We are waiting confirmation on their plans, including submission timelines. We know that the virus that causes COVID-19 is changing and mutating constantly. The virus will always be one step ahead of us, but we are closing the gap. Scientists around the world are combating or working hard to develop new treatments and vaccines to combat the effects of COVID-19. And Health Canada, as Canada's regulator, will continue to prioritize submissions for new treatments and vaccines to help protect Canadians from the effects of COVID-19. We've come a long way since the start of the pandemic. In addition to Canada's announcement about the bivalent vaccine, Health Canada has authorized the original COVID-19 vaccines for all Canadians six months of age and older, and we have approved original booster vaccines for individuals as young as five years of age. In summary, vaccination continues to be one of the most effective ways to protect ourselves against COVID-19 and is one of the most important ways Health Canada is helping to keep Canadians safe and healthy. Dr. New will provide an update on NASI guidance, but before that, we will uh, turn to Dr. Bertillon. 
Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. Bonjour, je vous remercie de votre présence. Je vais aujourd'hui vous parler de l'autorisation accordée par Santé Canada au premier vaccin bivalent contre la COVID-19 au Canada. Après avoir réalisé un examen scientifique approfondi et indépendant des données probantes, Santé Canada a autorisé une nouvelle version du vaccin Spivax de Moderna contre la COVID-19 pour les adultes de 18 ans et plus. Ce vaccin est appelé un vaccin bivalent car il cible deux souches de coronavirus, le virus SRAS-CoV-2 initial de 2019 et le variant Omicron BA1. Cela marque une étape importante dans la réponse du Canada à la pandémie. Je vais donc vous parler aujourd'hui de ce qu'est un vaccin bivalent, de ce qu'il fait et de la raison pour laquelle il jouera un rôle important dans la prochaine phase de la pandémie. Jusqu'à maintenant, les vaccins contre la COVID-19 homologués au Canada ciblaient la souche du virus SRAS-CoV-2 initial de 2019. Ces vaccins nous ont bien servi au fil du temps et continuent d'être très efficaces pour prévenir les maladies graves, les hospitalisations et les décès. Grâce aux milliards de doses qui ont été administrées à travers le monde, nous disposons désormais d'informations sur la façon dont les vaccins agissent contre les nouveaux variants. Dans le cas du variant Omicron qui circule actuellement, nous savons que l'efficacité des vaccins existants peut être moindre ou s'estomper avec le temps. L'un des avantages des vaccins à ARN messager est qu'ils peuvent être adaptés relativement rapidement pour agir contre les nouveaux variants. Les scientifiques et les fabricants de vaccins mettent à jour les vaccins contre la COVID-19 en ajoutant d'autres ingrédients qui ciblent spécifiquement les, sources, les souches virales en circulation. Par exemple, chaque dose du nouveau vaccin bivalent Spivax de Moderna contient 50 microgrammes d'ARN messager, soit 25 microgrammes ciblant la souche initiale du SRAS-CoV-2 et 25 microgrammes ciblant spécifiquement le sous-variant Omicron BA1. Il s'agit essentiellement de deux vaccins en un. La décision de Santé Canada d'autoriser ce nouveau vaccin bivalent est fondée sur les données tirées d'un essai clinique démontrant qu'une dose de rappel à l'aide du vaccin bivalent de Moderna déclenche une forte réponse immunitaire, à la fois contre le variant Omicron BA1 et contre la souche initiale du virus SRAS-CoV-2. Bien que le vaccin ait été conçu pour cibler plus spécifiquement le sous-variant BA1 d'Omicron, nous savons que ce vaccin déclenche également une bonne réponse immunitaire contre les sous-variants BA4 et BA5 de Micron qui sont apparus plus récemment. Le rappel à l'aide de ce vaccin vise également à prolonger la durée de la protection. Cela nous aidera à affronter les prochaines vagues. Sur le plan de l'inocuité, ce nouveau vaccin est semblable au Spivax de Moderna précédemment approuvé et il est associé aux mêmes effets indésirables légers qui s'estompent rapidement. Santé Canada examine actuellement une présentation de Pfizer-BioNTech pour un vaccin bivalent ciblant également la souche initiale du virus SRAS-CoV-2 et le sous-variant Omicron B1. Afin de nous assurer que nous ayons le plus d'options possibles pour combattre les variants actuels et futurs, nous avons demandé à Pfizer-BioNTech et à Moderna de présenter des demandes d'autorisation pour des vaccins ciblant spécifiquement les sous-variants BA4 et BA5. Nous attendons la confirmation de leur plan, y compris les délais de présentation. Nous savons que le virus qui cause la COVID-19 subit constamment des modifications et des mutations. C'est prévisible. Le virus a une longueur d'avance sur nous, mais l'écart se rétrécit. Les scientifiques du monde entier travaillent sans relâche à la mise au point de nouveaux traitements et vaccins pour lutter contre les effets de la COVID-19. Et Santé Canada, en tant qu'organisme de réglementation du Canada, continuera d'accorder la priorité aux présentations de nouveaux traitements et vaccins afin d'aider à protéger la population canadienne contre les effets de la COVID-19. Nous avons fait beaucoup de progrès depuis le début de la pandémie. En plus de l'annonce d'aujourd'hui concernant le vaccin bivalent, Santé Canada a autorisé l'utilisation des vaccins contre la souche d'origine de la COVID-19 chez tous les Canadiens âgés de six mois ou plus et nous avons approuvé des doses de rappel de vaccins dès l'âge de cinq ans. En résumé, la vaccination demeure l'un des moyens les plus efficaces pour se protéger contre la COVID-19 et c'est une façon importante pour Santé Canada de contribuer à la sécurité et à la santé des Canadiennes et des Canadiens. Je passe maintenant la parole au Dr Nou, qui présentera une mise à jour sur les lignes directrices du Comité consultatif national de l'immunisation et sur l'utilisation des vaccins bivalents comme dose de rappel cet automne. Merci. 
Merci, Dr. Bertillon. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Vaccination continues to be one of the most effective ways to protect against serious illness, hospitalization, and death from COVID-19. Health Canada's announcement of the authorization of Moderna's bivalent COVID-19 booster vaccine is indeed a major milestone. It provides people in Canada with an updated vaccine option to address the evolving virus that causes COVID-19. The bivalent vaccine is anticipated to provide stronger and broader protection, including against the Omicron variants that have been circulating. Since vaccine protection decreases over time, it is important to stay up to date by getting your first vaccine doses and booster doses as recommended. Booster doses are recommended for all eligible populations. If it has been six months since your last dose or six months since being infected with COVID-19, get another booster dose. This is especially important if you are at high risk for severe illness from COVID-19. In some provinces and territories, you may be offered a booster dose as soon as three months based on local circumstances, needs, and epidemiology. Earlier this month, the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, or NACI, provided recommendations for booster doses in preparation for the fall to better protect against an anticipated increase of COVID-19 activity during these months. Today, NACI has updated this guidance to reflect the authorization of bivalent vaccines. For adults 18 years of age and older, NACI recommends that a bivalent COVID-19 booster vaccine should be offered as a booster. If the bivalent booster is not readily available, an original mRNA COVID-19 vaccine should be offered to ensure timely protection. It is important to be aware that both the original and bivalent COVID-19 vaccines are effective as a booster. For adolescents 12 to 17 years of age with moderately or severe immunocompromising conditions and or who have biological or social risk factors that place them at high risk of severe outcomes from COVID-19, based on expert opinion and the data in adults, NACI also recommends that the bivalent vaccine may be offered to this population. Individuals who are eligible for boosters this fall, especially those at increased risk for severe illness from COVID-19, should not delay their planned vaccination in anticipation of a bi bivalent vaccine. Anyone choosing to delay a booster dose in anticipation of a new vaccine should carefully consider their individual risk. We are in close contact with provincial and territorial counterparts and understand they will be rolling out fall vaccination programs shortly. In fact, some vaccination campaigns have already begun. In terms of the availability, based on provincial and territorial projections, there will be enough supply of the Moderna Spikevax bivalent COVID-19 vaccine in Canada for everyone 18 years of age and older this fall and winter. Canada is well positioned to offer a robust bivalent booster campaign and shipments will begin arriving over the coming days and months. Please check your provincial, territorial or local health authority website for information on when the vaccine will be available in your area. The vast majority of Canadians have received two doses of a COVID-19 vaccine and many adults have received a booster. However, we know that protection from a vaccine or infection that was more than six months ago is not enough as COVID-19 immunity decreases over time. Staying up to date on vaccinations, including with booster dose, will provide the best protection against COVID-19 illness as we head into the fall. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. Good morning, everyone. La, la vaccination demeure l'un des moyens les plus efficaces de se protéger contre les maladies graves, l'hospitalisation et le décès causé par le COVID-19. Santé Canada a annoncé l'autorisation du vaccin de rappel bivalent contre la COVID-19 de Moderna. Il s'agit là d'une étape importante. Il offre aux Canadiens et Canadiennes une option vaccin à jour pour se protéger devant l'évolution du virus qui cause la COVID-19. On prévoit que le vaccin bivalent assurera une protection plus robuste et élargie, notamment contre les variants d'Omicron actuellement en circulation. Étant donné que la protection vaccinale diminue avec le temps, il est important de rester à jour en obtenant vos premières doses de vaccin et vos doses de rappel selon les recommandations. Les doses de rappel sont recommandées pour toutes les populations admissibles. Vous êtes invité à recevoir une autre dose de rappel 
six mois après votre dernière dose ou six mois après avoir été infecté par la COVID-19. Cette dose de rappel est, est particulièrement importante pour les personnes qui sont susceptibles aux maladies graves en raison de la COVID-19. Dans certaines provinces et certains territoires, on peut vous offrir un rappel très, euh, dès trois mois selon les circonstances locales, les besoins et l'épidémiologie. Plus tôt cet été, le Comité consultatif national de l'immunisation, le CCNI, a formulé des recommandations sur les doses de rappel en prévision de l'automne afin de mieux protéger la population contre une recrudescence anticipée de la COVID-19 au cours de cette période. Aujourd'hui, le CCNI a mis à jour ses lignes directrices pour tenir compte de l'autorisation des vaccins bivalents. Pour les adultes de 18 ans et plus, le CCNI recommande qu'un vaccin bivalent contre la COVID-19 soit offert comme vaccin de rappel. Si le vaccin bivalent n'est pas facilement accessible, un vaccin à ARN, ARN messager d'origine contre la COVID-19 devrait être proposé pour assurer une protection en temps voulu. Il est important de savoir que les vaccins originaux et bivalents contre la COVID-19 sont tous les deux efficaces comme dose de rappel. Pour les adolescents de 12 à 17 ans présentant une déficience immunitaire de modérée à sévère ou présentant des facteurs de risque biologiques ou sociaux qui les exposent à un risque élevé d'effets graves s'ils sont atteints de la COVID-19, selon l'opinion d'experts et les données recueillies dans la population adulte, le CCNI recommande que le vaccin bivalent leur soit offert. Les personnes admissibles à des rappels cet automne, en particulier celles qui sont susceptibles de présenter des effets graves si elles ont, sont éteintes de la COVID-19, ne devraient pas retarder leur vaccination prévue pour attendre le vaccin bivalent. Les personnes qui choisissent de retarder l'administration d'une dose de rappel pour, la, pour attendre l'arrivée de nouveaux vaccins ont tout intérêt à examiner attentivement le risque individuel que ce choix peut comporter. Nous sommes en étroite communication avec nos homologues provinciaux et territoriaux et nous croyons savoir qu'ils mettront rapidement en œuvre des programmes de vaccination pour l'automne. En fait, certaines campagnes de vaccination ont déjà commencé. En ce qui concerne la disponibilité cet automne et cet hiver, selon les projections des provinces et des territoires, il y aura suffisamment de doses de vaccins bivalents contre la COVID-19 de Moderna Spike Vax au Canada pour toutes les personnes de 18 ans et plus. Le Canada est bien placé pour offrir une solide campagne de rappel du vaccin bivalent. Les commandes commenceront à arriver au cours des prochains jours et des prochains mois. Veuillez consulter le site Web de votre autorité sanitaire provinciale, territoriale ou locale pour savoir à quel moment le vaccin sera disponible dans votre région. La grande majorité des Canadiens et Canadiennes ont reçu deux doses d'un vaccin contre la COVID-19 et de nombreux adultes ont reçu un vaccin de rappel. Cependant, nous savons que la protection qui confère un vaccin ou une infection survenue il y a plus de six mois n'est pas suffisante car l'immunité à la COVID-19 diminue au fil du temps. À l'approche de l'automne, le maintien à jour de la vaccination, y compris le vaccin de rappel, offrira la meilleure protection contre la COVID-19. Merci. Thank you. Miigwech. Nous allons maintenant passer aux questions. Ce sera une question et une question de suivi. Je vous invite à lever votre main si vous voulez poser une question. We will start with Adam Miller from CBC News. My question. So Canada hasn't procured any BA5 or BA4 targeted bivalent vaccines or received submission for Health Canada approval from Pfizer or Moderna for those vaccines, despite the fact that the FDA approved them in the U.S. this week. Dr. Sharma, you mentioned Canada had reached out to Moderna and Pfizer about the BA4 and BA5 targeted vaccines, and you're waiting for a confirmation on their plans. Why was Canada unable to acquire vaccines that target the dominant circulating BA4 and BA5 variants? And why did we choose BA1 targeted bivalent vaccines instead? Sorry, 
Sure, I'll start with respect to the regulatory side of things, then we'll turn over to, to Dr. New. So in terms of the BA4 or 5 bivalent uh, Omicron vaccines, we are expecting a submission as early as next week from Pfizer. Um, we have had discussions with Moderna as well and are expecting them to also file within the next uh, two weeks. We made a decision, as did a, a number of different regulators, to consider, to accept and consider the BA1 bivalent updated vaccine making sure that we have options. So we know that these updated vaccines are important to be able to give that optimal maintenance of uh, immunity against the Omicron strain. We know that there is clinical information for the BA1, and we also know that there is data that shows that it does have effect against BA4 and BA5. So the BA1 vaccine was a, is, a, is a good option in terms of getting a booster, providing a stronger and broader immunity, as well as some protection against the BA4. So we wanted to make sure that we had that, we had that in-house and we had that reviewed. And as you noted, we will be getting the other submissions and we'll review those to make sure that we have as many options as we uh, we can for Canadians. Hey, thanks. And, and, and this is Dr. New. Uh, what I can say that, uh, you know, certainly it's good news that we have a uh, a range of uh, booster va vaccines available in Canada. And, and to Dr. Sharma's point, uh, when you look at the bivalent vaccine, and you know, what's different? Uh, all of the vaccines we currently have available still do a very good job in protecting against severe consequences against COVID-19. But as we've seen with the, the Omicron wave, uh, certainly there's an, is an element of what we call a, you know immune or vaccine escape uh, from the Omicron variants. And so the fact that we have a bivalent vaccine here in Canada, you know, based on the original sort of uh, variant that, that uh, of Omicron, is sufficiently different compared to the original strain that it offers that, that, that additional protection against Omicron. Uh, you know, is, we're not alone in Canada. Look at uh, many other countries, uh, if, for example, in Europe, they've all also authorized uh, the bivalent vaccine with the BA1 variant. You know, looking forward, uh, certainly as Dr. Sharma indicated, the evidence we have to date shows that the, the bivalent vaccine with BA1 offers good protections against BA4 or 5. Uh, certainly, as the situation evolves, we'll have to look at the evidence and see what happens, as you say, in real-world effectiveness, uh, uh, what might be any differences. And those studies are obviously ongoing in terms of uh, looking at a more specific uh, BA1, a bivalent uh, vaccine, as compared to BA4 or 5. But I think, you know, at this point, we're very uh, uh, comfortable. And I think uh, certainly with our provincial territorial colleagues, we're very keen uh, to be start rolling out uh, the vaccine campaigns uh, offering a bivalent vaccine. Do you have okay, a follow-up, Adam? Just follow-up. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that the original vaccines, the ancestral strain vaccines, could be still be offered as a booster. Um, that, that was in the nasty guns. You mentioned that as well, that, that that is still available to Canadians if, you know, they, they can't get a bivalent vaccine. What is the, the if you could just walk me through sort of the, the longer-term plan with these updated vaccines. I mean, we've got... BA1 bivalent vaccines coming uh, and just approved today. You mentioned BA4 and BA5 vaccines. You're seeing um, a submission on those in the next couple of weeks. What happens to the original vaccines and then the BA1 vaccines once the BA4 and 5 targeted uh, vaccine formulation updated bivalent vaccines come out? Like, are, are we getting to the point where the original vaccine may not be used in the future? Will the BA4 and BA5 targeted vaccines replace the BA1 targeted vaccines? If you could kind of walk me through what your long-term public health goals are with these updated vaccines, that would be great. Okay, I, I could certainly start uh, from a, from a you know public health perspective. Uh, we understand obviously the virus continues to evolve, and we need to continue to evolve with it in terms of our you know our, our vaccine our, our programs and obviously the vaccines themselves. Uh, what I can say is that uh, you know the the original I would say you know, the COVID nineteen vaccines have certainly served us in good stead in terms of uh, that that good protection. But as we've seen with uh, the Omicron wave, you're right. Uh, you know there is that element of vaccine escape that we need to be mindful of, and uh, and uh, uh, kudos to the companies that have uh, continued to do the quote work in the lab and, and otherwise uh, to be able to offer what we now call the bivalent vaccines. Uh, you're right. Uh, moving forward, uh, and I, I don't want to draw you know a strict analogy to like influenza. 
influenza. But, you know, having that, that initial base of, of sort of the, the influenza vaccine, and in this case, the COVID-19 vaccines, uh, you know, what we see is that uh, over time, you know, depending on sort of uh, how, uh, you know, variants evolve and so on, uh, we we can certainly see that uh, uh, down the road, it, it might be a case that on a whatever regular basis or so, uh, we, we might be uh, changing, quote, the, the formulation of the, the types of uh, strains uh, in the COVID-19 vaccines based on uh, uh, what's happening both here in Canada and around the world. So this is, uh, I think, a, a major step in, in acknowledging that uh, the COVID-19, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's say the SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, continues to evolve. And certainly because of the Omicron variant being sort of the big uh, sort of a change that has a uh, uh, had an impact in terms of vaccine effectiveness uh, because of its immune escape uh, properties. Uh, that's why we're offering, uh, uh, or that's why the companies have developed the bivalent vaccine. Once you start getting to a sort of the subvariants, so BA1, 4, 5, uh, certainly I would say that at, at the heart of it, the uh, sort of the original sort of the uh, BA1, uh, uh, you know, uh, variant. Uh, uh, sort of uh, indicative of Omicron. Omicron is different enough from the original strain that, as uh, you know, we've seen from the evidence to date, it offers good cross protection across the range of of the other uh, uh, subvariants for Omicron. Uh, for example, BA four or five. And I think uh, we need to be careful. It, it can't just be a matter of sort of trying to catch up with what might be the latest circulating virus. Uh, we need to look at the the whole of uh, what's happening here in Canada, uh, around the world, uh, looking a very uh, I, I would say uh, in depth that sort of the uh, that the changes in the in the in the in the virus, not just quote an individual subvariant, but maybe you know what might be a major change, you know, be in the spike protein or you know uh, other uh, uh, other factors that might uh, you know uh, lead towards uh, having a, let's say another sort of uh, you know formulation of, of the vaccine. So that's what I would say is sort of the the big picture moving forward. Uh, recognizing that uh, the virus will continue to evolve and uh, uh, as, as, as such, uh, the vaccines will also continue to evolve to keep up uh, in offering uh, Canadians and others around the world uh, the best possible protection. On va continuer avec Émilie Bergeron de La Presse canadienne. Oui, bonjour, un peu dans la même veine de la question qui vient d'être posée. Euh, avec euh, avec ce, ce nouveau vaccin et euh, aussi les vaccins qui vont venir, qui vont cibler le BA4, euh, le BA4 et le BA5, oui, le, le, les, les doses de, du vaccin euh, de la souche d'origine, euh, craignez-vous qu'on qu n'arrive pas à les écouler? Et qu'est-ce qu qui va se passer avec ces doses-là? Est-ce que vous craignez qu'on qu doit... Euh, jeter une quantité importante de vaccins qui vont demeurer inutilisés? Uh, ça, c'est une question uh, actuellement pour les, les provinces et territoires, mais je pense pour l'instant, uh, avec les vaccins, ils ont dans leur, uh, leur, mais leur position, uh, possession uh, et on, on, on continue à offrir une, une, une dose de rappel avec uh, les vaccins. Les vaccins, ils ont actuellement, mais uh, avec uh, l'autorisation d'un vaccin bivalent et aussi uh, avec uh, les, les, les livraisons des, des, des vaccins bivalents aux provinces territoires. C'est sûr que les, les provinces et territoires hein, vont peut-être euh, modifier le, le programme de vaccination. Euh, je pense, hein, euh, selon les recommandations de, de CCNI, euh, je pense que c'est euh, euh, le premier choix peut-être plus tard d'offrir un vaccin bivalent, mais ce, ce, ce n'est pas disponible. Hein. C'est toujours une, une, une bonne option d'offrir une, une comme dit, un, un vaccin original euh, pour euh, se protéger, mais euh, on, on verra au futur. Euh, C'est sûr, avec, euh, avec l'approvisionnement et aussi peut-être euh, la disponibilité des, des vaccins bivalents, que peut-être euh, on va plus utiliser ce, euh, ce vaccin comparé au, 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 au vaccin original. Vous avez dit, Dr. New, que les premières livraisons du vaccin bivalent vont arriver bientôt. Est-ce qu'elles vont être accessibles largement? Combien de temps pourrait s'écouler avant qu'elles soient largement disponibles? Et avez-vous des craintes que plusieurs, que de nombreux Canadiens repoussent leur rendez-vous pour une dose de rappel? 
Ah, merci pour la question. Ce que je peux vous dire euh, euh, aujourd'hui, c'est que oui, euh, je pense que la semaine prochaine, on va commencer, euh, on va commencer déjà euh, avec euh, les livraisons en province et territoire. Je pense que euh, dans l'ensemble, on a un contrat avec Moderne pour, je pense, 12 millions de doses. Euh, ça, ça c'est beaucoup. Et je pense que la plupart de, 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 de euh, le, le 12 millions vont même être capables de livrer pendant la, la prochaine... Euh, on est déjà en mois de septembre, pour euh, peut-être euh, d'ici à la fin du mois de septembre. Donc, je pense qu'on est dans une bonne position et je pense que les provinces et territoires, ils, ils commencent maintenant avec leur planification et leur, 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 leur campagne de, de vaccination pour offrir le, euh, les, les vaccins bivalents euh, aux, aux populations admissibles. Laura Usman, CP. Good morning, doctors. Thanks for taking our questions. Um, I wanted to um, go back to those conversations about pursuing the BA.1 uh, vaccine versus the BA.4 and BA.5. Can you just give us a sense of what, what those conversations were like? Were there issues? Were we expecting that if we went straight to the BA.4.5 that there may be delays in getting it, for example, um, and that's why we pursued the BA.1 um, Can you just kind of explain what those conversations were like? I, I could start, uh, and, and certainly I would also defer to my uh, regulatory colleagues. Uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, part of part of the, uh, the, the the sort of the, the complexity, is sort of you know, the timing, etc., of the actual submissions to Health Canada for uh, you know. Uh, Uh, you know, the, the bivalent vaccines, the BA1 and, and 4 and 5, and, and Dr. Sharma and Dr. Bechtium have already uh, uh, pronounced on that. So so that's that's one thing. You know, we can't really uh, act uh, if, if the company hasn't even, quote, uh, put forward a submission to Health Canada. Having said that, uh, uh, certainly based on, you know, discussions with the manufacturer in terms of, you know, their their capacity capability in terms of the contracts we have for for for, for vaccines, uh, that's all part of a mix. And you're right, it's, it's, it's a very, uh, I would say, uh, 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 complex dynamic, uh, but certainly from what we've seen and the evidence we have to date, and similar to uh, uh, many other countries, for example, in Europe, uh, uh, we're very uh, comfortable with the fact that, uh, you know, the, 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 the bivalent vaccine based on the BA1, which is really sort of the original Omicron variant, is sufficiently different from the original strain that offers that, quote, additional a substantial benefit uh, in, in terms of protection, uh, protecting an individual against uh, COVID-19. Uh, once again, to like, you know, the, the sub-variants and how that, you know, may ebb and flow and who knows what the, the next sub-variant maybe of Omicron or a completely new uh, a variant uh, that might emerge in the coming, you know, uh, days, weeks or months. Uh, the, those are uh, things that you, you have to take into consideration in terms of hey, what do you have in hand versus, you know, thinking of what might, quote, potentially happen in the future. So I think uh, at the end of the day, Uh, we're very comfortable with the fact we have a good bivalent uh, vaccine. And the fact is that, uh, uh, as we've said at the get-go, uh, you know, if it's been six uh, over six months since uh, your last, uh, you know, vaccine dose and or infection, definitely go out and, and, uh, and, and get, a, get a booster dose. And perhaps to, to add a bit, you know, uh, you know, all along the pandemic, as we were dealing with variants of concerns, companies were starting to look at whether or not they should adapt their vaccines. So basically every variant of concern that's come along at some point in time, the companies have developed those uh, different vaccines. They didn't end up going into testing them in terms of the clinical trials because we didn't actually need them at that point in time. We were still seeing, I think, very good uh, effectiveness from the original strain vaccines. So it was the same thing with Omicron. Um, and we knew that they were developing a BA1 vaccine Uh, as well as BA4 or 5. And internationally, in general, there's been a consensus that because we have the BA1 data, so clinical trial data, where we've given the certain uh, one group of people the bivalent vaccine involving the BA1 strain and another group just the original strain, and we had that data, and it was shown to be quite effective and expected to, to work against Omicron. And because the BA1 strain, it's still Omicron. So there's more similarities with the BA4 or 5 strain than it is with, with the original strain, that that would be a good option. And a lot of countries have gone that way, have decided that they would pursue the BA1. It's not mutually exclusive. We'll continue to look at other
other options. But, you know, we were faced with the fact that we were looking at a lot of provinces and territories that were going to be starting their campaigns, their fall campaigns, some as early as August. And we wanted to make sure that that there were options that available. So it's based on what we know about the vaccines, what we know about the circulating viruses, how much how much information we had in terms of the clinical data and the potential availability of the vaccine. So all of that went into making our decisions. And again, it's always based on having options for Canadians. And as everyone has been saying, you know, these booster doses are important, especially if you're more than six months out of your last uh, booster dose, especially if you haven't had COVID-19. Um, to make sure that you're optimizing your protection. And then for other people that maybe have had their more recent boosters or have had COVID-19, there's recommendations as well. But it's really important to make sure that that everyone is up to date. It's one layer of protection. You know, there's other layers of protection as well. And so that's why we're, we're very excited about the announcement today. And we want to make sure that people um, go out and get their boosters. Thank you. Um, do you get the sense that now you have one of these bivalent vaccine approvals under your belt and, and the, the manufacturers seem to know what they're doing with the bivalent vaccines, that approvals will be able to come more quickly so that we can more quickly catch up to the variants as they as they arrive? I mean, certainly we're learning as we go through this pandemic, as everyone else is, um, you know, we're still dealing with a relatively new virus and relatively new vaccines. So we want to make sure that the evidence that's uh, provided supports the use of the vaccines in the most safe and effective manner. But definitely, you know, as we're having discussions with our international counterparts, as we know more about the science, uh, we're applying that as we go. So all of the different vi- the vaccines that we've looked at, all of the different indications in terms of change to the age groups, um, what we know about the science where, you know, just recently there was more information around how a previous illness potentially with BA1 gives you immunity against BA4 or 5. So all that goes into, into the process. And as we have more familiarity with um, the virus and with the vaccines, then that does make the process more, more efficient. On va continuer avec Olivier Ferrand-Boissé de TVA. Oui, bonjour. Donc, euh, j'aimerais savoir, euh, c'est quoi l'amélioration, peut-être pour Dr Bertillon, l'amélioration en, en pourcentage de la protection démontrée par le vaccin bivalent chez les humains? En fait, comment la compagnie a démontré la valeur ajoutée du vaccin bivalent, Dr Bertillon? Certainement. Alors, euh, il y a eu euh, des discussions euh, sur le plan international pour euh, euh, évaluer comment est-ce qu'on on ferait le, le pont entre les, les versions euh, originales des vaccins et les versions euh, qui seraient adaptées à des nouveaux variants. Euh, il y a eu un consensus qui a été établi que euh, des études qui démontrent des taux d'anticorps efficaces seraient acceptables pour euh, être euh, utilisés comme point de référence de l'efficacité. En anglais, on appelle ça de, de l'immunobridge. Euh, donc, ce qui a été fait, c'est qu'on a regardé essentiellement euh, dans un essai clinique avec euh, le vaccin bivalent, quels sont les taux d'anticorps euh, spécifiques contre la souche initiale, puis contre la souche euh, du variant BA1, puis comment ça se compare à des gens qui recevaient comme dose de rappel euh, le vaccin euh, seulement euh, contenant la souche initiale. Ce qui a été démontré, c'est que euh, on avait un, un certain taux d'anticorps contre le micron euh, quand on prenait la, la souche initiale seule, mais quand c'est combiné dans un vaccin bivalent, euh, les taux d'anticorps spécifiques contre le variant micron étaient sept fois plus élevés. Euh, si on regarde là, au niveau euh, du, de, la, de, la, de la souche initiale, c'était plus autour de trois, trois, trois fois les, les, euh, une amélioration de trois fois des taux d'anticorps pré- et post-vaccination. Donc, ce qu'on a démontré, c'est que le, le vaccin bivalent euh, génère des, une réponse en anticorps un mois après le, la, la dose significativement plus importante contre le variant Omicron, ce qu'on peut corréler là, euh, sur la base des études passées avec euh, le, le, la, la durée de la protection et l'efficacité de la protection. Alors, c'est comme ça, sur cette base-là, qu'on a approuvé le vaccin bivalent euh, Spivax de Moderna. OK. Um... Et peut-être, juste si vous pourriez juste compléter, comment vous, comment vous qualifiez cette, cette bonne protection contre Omicron? Mais ce n'est pas mon suivi. Mon suivi, c'est pour, pour Dr. Nou, c'est pour un, un collègue. J'aimerais euh, seulement faire un suivi sur un dossier, à savoir, 
pourquoi, à, à quoi ça sert encore les tests aléatoires aux frontières si on reçoit le résultat dix jours plus tard? Pourquoi c'est encore pertinent, Dr. New? Merci pour la question. Ce que je peux vous dire, que tout, tout les, les mesures à la frontière, c'est toujours... On est en train d'analyser euh, les données probantes aussi. C'est quoi la... Uh, l'efficacité uh, d'une mesure à la frontière comparée avec qu ce qui se passe actuellement au sein du pays. Donc, uh, je pense qu'on uh, a déjà parlé, peut-être qu'il uh, y a uh, des, des bénéfices. Uh, 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 ça, ça fait partie de l'ensemble de, de nos, nos efforts de surveillance, mais uh, on, 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 on doit regarder aussi qu'est-ce qu'on fait au sein du pays avec uh, tous les indicateurs, tous les autres uh, outils on a. Que, uh, par exemple, on utilise uh, de plus en plus, comme il dit, uh, la surveillance des eaux usées. Donc, uh, avec tout ça, la question reste, est-ce qu'il y a une valeur ajoutée avec le, le, comme des dépistages aléatoires à la frontière comparé avec tous nos efforts au sein du pays? Et l'autre question aussi, c'est est-ce que c'est quoi les, 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 comme des, les, les coûts, les bénéfices, si on veut aussi avoir, avoir la, la capacité de peut-être détecter comme l'importation peut-être des, 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 des autres variants de la COVID-19 dans le pays de, de l'étranger. Donc, c'est fait partie de toutes les, les questions, les analyses. Continue à faire et, euh, et euh, on, on, on donne tous les, les, comme les, les résultats aux décideurs. My cher McLeod de Globe and Mail. Good morning. Thanks for taking our questions. Um, Come across some some posts on social media. I imagine Canadians may see these as well, where where some people are expressing this fear and and claims, oh, the new booster, it's only been tested on mice, and I think people just expressing that fear that they feel it's not safe. And and I wonder what you would say to someone who comes across a post like that to help them accurately assess that information and just accurately understand the safety of the the new booster. Sure, I can start. So with respect to the BA1 bivalent, the one that's been authorized today, um, it was uh, studied in humans. So I think some of the comments that are online around um, the mice data is really uh, related to the 4-5 uh, package that the US FDA looked at. So I think, first of all, I would say that when Health Canada reviews a vaccine, any vaccine, we want to make sure that it meets standards for safety and efficacy and quality. And we've said that from the beginning, from the beginning of the pandemic. So we wouldn't authorize a vaccine unless we felt it met those standards. Um, we do know a lot about these vaccines, specifically the Moderna one that we're talking about now, because of the reviews that we've done for the original strain vaccines, um, for the, the, the data that's been shown for the uh, younger populations as well, but also because of the billions of doses that have been administered around the world. So all of that goes into looking at um, how these work. And when Health Canada looked at this vaccine, um, we looked at something called immunobridging. So you have two groups, one that's given the, the new vaccine, the bivalent with both strains, and one with the original and we compare them. So, and on the safety side, they're almost identical. So there weren't other safety issues that came up. Um, the side effects that we saw were generally mild and self-limited and were the same in the, two, in the two groups. And what it did show is that it gave you a better immune response. So it, a higher immune response for something we look for called antibodies. And so based on that, we we authorize the vaccine. We'll continue to monitor these vaccines as well. We have a very good system in Canada in terms of follow-up, working with the Public Health Agency of Canada and the provinces and territories to, to look at that data, as well as looking at data from all over the world. So we want to make sure that people understand there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of misinformation and disinformation out there. So to make sure that they're getting that information from trusted sources, if they have concerns, you know, reach out to the healthcare professional professional as well for additional information. It's important that they feel comfortable about making those decisions, but we very, feel very comfortable with the authorization of this vaccine and in the statements that we're making about how important it is for people to go out and get their boosters. 
Yeah, it's Dr. New. Maybe I just offer an additional point from a from a public health perspective. Uh, as I think we mentioned earlier in in this press conference, you know, I'm not saying we're there yet, but if you look at you know how we deal with the influenza vaccine, you know, certainly uh, as uh, Dr. Sharma indicated, you know, this is a relatively new uh, uh, virus, uh, SARS-CoV-2, and obviously the vaccines are also relatively new. But lots and lots of experience in terms of this platform, this space, you know, the mRNA vaccines, and you know, billions of doses have been administered around the world, and so if uh, down the road, including obviously with uh, today's announcement, you know, it's about uh, adjusting in terms of maybe different strains or an additional strain in the vaccine. I think uh, that's similar to, you know, the construct we've used for, for many years for influenza vaccine, where, you know, the basic uh, vaccine is the same, and it's a matter of adjusting it, let's say, from season to season in terms of the strains that we put into the vaccine. So I'm not saying we're there yet. It's not a perfect uh, sort of analogy to influenza, but that's where the, the thinking is starting to go. Thanks. Thanks. And uh, just as a follow up, maybe a little bit related um, for anyone out there who feels a little bit overwhelmed and confused about, you know, whether the terms the VA1, VA5, Omicron, um, and kind of just wants to throw up their hands and say, oh, well, I got the original one. What what might you say to them? What might be kind of your one, one message um, to someone feeling a little overwhelmed by the information out there? Uh, maybe it's myself, Doctor New. I, you know, you were, you were mentioning about, oh, what if someone got that, uh, you know, original vaccine? He said, "That's great. I got the original vaccine." I think, you know, nothing against all of the uh, sort of technical aspects of immunity and so on. It, that, by getting that original vaccine, you know, your body's reacted. You know, getting that that sort of a first a challenge and, and uh, with a sort of the immune response. So you have a very good foundation and a base. And you know, uh, what the booster doses are meant to do are basically build on that in terms of, you know, sort of a modifying. A, adding to sort of uh, uh, your immune, uh, you know, response and, and, and protection that was already built on the initial uh, uh, response you had to, to, to the vaccine that you got originally. So I'd say that's great. There's nothing bad, you know, about having had the original vaccine. It served as a strong foundation and uh, whatever booster doses uh, you've had, and hopefully you'll go forward and get your uh, bivalent uh, vaccine booster as, as, you know, the timing uh, is, uh, you know, for you. Uh, I think that that's, that's, uh, that's what I think uh, is a takeaway. And as we've said repeatedly, if it's been more than six months since your, uh, you know, last uh, dose uh, and or infection, please go forward and, and, and think about getting your, your booster dose. We'll continue Perhaps with to add, I mean, I think the first thing I would say is that I understand um, that people can feel overwhelmed. There's a lot of information and, you know, the messaging has changed a bit from the beginning of the pandemic. We were at the beginning saying, you know, run, don't walk, get your first vaccine, get the first vaccine that's available to you is really straightforward um, in terms of that initial messaging. But it does get more complicated, right? Because we are in a different situation. Um, we there are different people in different um, in different situations with respect to which vaccines they've had, when they've had them, if they've had COVID-19, if they haven't. Um, but all of this has been very positive. So the first thing I would say is that the vaccines are still uh, amazing. They have served us so well in this unprecedented pandemic that we're all facing with. So, you know, at the beginning, we had very good effectiveness. They've served us well through many, many, many cases of, of COVID-19 through the world. They're still very good in terms of preventing serious illness, hospitalization, and, and death. But we've seen that there, Omicron was really a game changer, and it changed the way um, that that people's immunity is expected to last and sort of how the durability of it. But in response to that, we do have vaccines that we can adapt and that we can update. So what I would say overall is absolutely you can understand where people are coming from. But what we're doing is that we're using the science and the evidence of what we know about these vaccines. Companies are studying new versions to make sure that when people go and get their next dose, um, it's the best version for them and it's updated and it meets what we think may be coming in terms of the future um, as we move into the fall and winter, where we know that, you know, if it's if it's going to be like other years, we do see increases in terms of um, COVID-19 and other respiratory viruses as well. So I think overall, everything is, as we said, the vaccines have served us very well. And this is an updated one. It's, uh, I won't say another tool in the tool belt. I think that's overused a lot, but we've, we've got a sharpened tool now that we can we can use. We'll continue with Alex Boyd. 
Hi, guys. Thanks so much for taking questions. Uh, I was just hoping to pick up on that question about what we're going to do with our original vaccines. I know someone had, had raised the question of what we do with the stuff that's already in freezers, um, but obviously we've got lots of contracts uh, for original vaccines still to arrive in the country. Um, and just curious if there's any sort of plan of, of what will happen to those or whether we might see, for example, um, more donations going to other countries as demand shifts to the bivalence. Um, obviously, Canada is set to miss our COVAX uh, obligations uh, again again this year. Um, so just again, wondering if there's any clarity about whether or not we might see some of those going overseas. It's, it's Dr. New, uh, and thank you for that question. Uh, what I would say is that uh, you're right, you know, uh, certainly uh, uh, it's uh, an evolving landscape in terms of, you know, the vaccines we have in hand, maybe as you pointed out, uh, uh, contracts for, uh, you know, maybe additional doses of uh, some of those original vaccines that are still in play. And of course, uh, now with the uh, announcement and the contracts we have for the bivalent vaccine, uh, that's all part of the mix. Uh, all I can say at this point is that uh, there are folks, as they say, working very, very hard, as they say, behind the scenes, uh, looking at all of these issues are looking at what the, what the options are, and, and certainly as as uh, the, as uh, we come you know, closer to uh, sort of uh, recommendations for for our obviously our, the decision makers, uh, we'll be bringing that forward. So I, I can't say that uh, we're not uh, sort of ignoring it or, or not paying attention. Uh, the, the work is uh, underway right now. Thank you. And and just a quick follow up: Is there any uh, advice yet from Nasty in terms of interval spacing uh, for the new bivalence? Like, if you had you know a regular shot for a third or fourth dose, how soon can you be getting or considering a bivalent dose? It's Dr. New. Based on the Nasty uh, advice, uh, certainly uh, it's consistent in terms of the interval. Uh, we're saying that uh, if you've had a uh, you know, uh, a previous booster dose, whatever number you've had before, or infection, uh, you you uh, you could uh, should wait. Uh, you know, six months, but uh, certainly based on lo local circumstances, uh, other considerations, uh, that interval uh, may be decreased. You know, uh, down to like three months or so. But certainly, I would leave it to uh, obviously uh, individual, uh, provincial, and territorial territorial authorities, as well as obviously uh, you know at an individual basis, or you know, obviously a good discussion between uh, uh, someone and, and their healthcare provider. Uh, bon, je vois qu'il n'y a plus de questions en ligne. Louis Blouin ici de Radio-Canada, si vous permettez, moi, je, je vais vous en ajouter une. Je suis curieux de savoir pourquoi il faut un peu courir après les, les sociétés pharmaceutiques pour qu'ils nous proposent justement leur version de ces vaccins contre BA4, BA5. Qu'est-ce qui se passe? Est-ce qu'ils est qu jugent que le Canada n'est pas un marché assez important? Pourquoi n'ont-ils pas soumis leurs données? C'est pas clair dans mon esprit. Certainement. Euh, donc, euh, euh, comme euh, on a mentionné, euh, il y a eu, euh, dans le fond, l'apparition du variant BA1 a précédé, euh, Omicron BA1 a précédé, euh, évidemment, le BA4, BA5. Et la, ce qu'on a eu avec le BA1, c'est la possibilité de faire des études. Donc, les, les données euh, qui supportent l'utilisation du vaccin BA1 euh, sont, sont, sont robustes. On peut s'y fier, on peut l'approuver. Euh, pourquoi pas modifier le, le, le vaccin à chaque fois qu'il y a un variant? Bien, ça a été mentionné qu'il y a des variants qui ont peu d'impact sur la, la protection globale euh, du vaccin original. Euh, on a vu des fluctuations, mais ça restait quand même une très bonne protection. Arrivent les variants Omicron, où là, il y a plus d'échappements immunologiques, immunitaires euh, au vaccin initial, d'où l'indication à ce moment-là de euh, considérer de mettre à jour le vaccin. On a toujours su qu'on pouvait mettre à jour le vaccin, mais c'est quand même complexe. Ça demande des études, ça demande des, des ajustements aux, aux chaînes de production. Donc, ce n'est pas quelque chose qui peut être fait euh, de, de façon euh, nécessairement euh, rapide. C'est quelque chose qui demande quand même une certaine planification. Donc, il faut que ça vaille la peine. Donc, avec l'arrivée des variants Micron, euh, là, on a vraiment vu la nécessité euh, sur le plan là, de la protection de considérer l'utilisation d'un vaccin bivalent. Maintenant, votre question, BA1 versus BA5, euh, actuellement, les données euh, de, de la famille, dans le fond, des variants euh, Omicron et que le variant... Si on a une protection avec le, le, le vaccin biva, bivalent contenant le variant Omicron BA1, on a une bonne protection contre le BA4, BA5. Donc, c est, c est, ça devient des distinctions fines. Euh, mais dans les faits, la protection 
est là. Euh, puis les discussions euh, continuent avec les manufacturiers. On va leur demander, on leur a demandé de soumettre leurs données euh, quand, pour les, euh, les, 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 les variants euh, BA4, BA5 dans un vaccin bivalent. Puis on va voir comment les données se comparent. Puis à partir de là, euh, on pourra voir là, si c'est approuvé au Canada. Mais il y a des discussions constantes, il y a de la recherche constante qui se fait au niveau international, des discussions entre les agences réglementaires au niveau des approches euh, par rapport à, à la mise à jour des vaccins. L'approche qui a été prise au Canada d'approuver le vaccin euh, bivalent avec le variant Omicron BA1 est la même qu'en Europe, est la même qu'au Royaume-Uni, est la même qu'en Australie, est la même qu'en Suisse. Donc, c est, c est, il y a quand même euh, un consensus là, sur la valeur de ce vaccin bivalent-là avec le variant BA1 pour protéger contre l'ensemble des variants Omicron sur la base des données actuelles. Et un expert me disait ce matin euh, que par rapport à ces euh, vaccins là BA4, BA5 homologués aux États-Unis par la FDA, qu'il y a encore un manque de données euh, pour les tests effectués sur les humains. Euh, Est-ce que vous êtes d'accord avec ça qu'il y a encore peut-être des, des données manquantes sur ces, euh, sur ce, ces vaccins là homologués aux États-Unis? Malheureusement, pas dans la. J'ai dans... dans l'impossibilité de commenter sur ce qui a été reçu aux États-Unis en termes de données. Euh, pour ce qui est du Canada, euh, comme euh, on a mentionné précédemment, on n'a pas encore reçu les, euh, les, les soumissions contenant l'information sur le BA4, BA5. C'est lorsqu'on va avoir reçu ces soumissions-là et on va les avoir analysées qu'on va être en mesure de commenter sur la, la robustesse et la, la validité euh, des... des résultats euh, pour ces variants-là. Je vous remercie beaucoup. Merci d'avoir pris mes questions aussi à la fin. Merci pour votre disponibilité. C'est ce qui met fin à cette séance d'information. Merci beaucoup d'avoir été là. Au revoir. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Thank you.